You'll know that something went wrong if you go to try to set up something like this and you don't see the instance uh, name. And in an example of, of where I've kind of uh, screwed that up in the past was back over here in my header file, I put the wrong type in there. Okay, so maybe I'd put in UI button and then back over an interface builder, um, you know, I kept trying to like be like, hey, well, how come? Basically, I was seeing nothing when I did that. All right. And um, so now this, uh, this object um, knows that it is my segment. Um, in fact, I guess actually over here too, you, we could have set it up um, through this method where it's referencing outlet my segment. Um, I actually haven't done that in a while. Let me see. Maybe I can just drag from. Okay, so yeah, it's kind of the same deal. I, I could have started over here and just gone and dragged to, to, to that. It would have done the same thing. Uh, and if you're kind of thinking ahead, uh, you can see that we also have a lot of uh, other options over here for the events like touch up inside or value changed and we'll be doing a very similar thing in a second to um, associate this action or event um, with a, a method in our uh, files owner or an action for you know a function for doing something or other so we'll do that in a little bit but uh, again just a little hint of things to come so anyway uh, let's go back over here to Xcode and let's get back over here to our implementation file uh, when I launch this bad boy it uh, should set the alpha down at uh, 0.5 so let's go ahead and build and run it do, do, do. and surely enough that uh, definitely looks like the uh, the alpha is at 50%. Eh, we don't really want that though. Set it back at one. Um, some other things you can play around with just like right away is you could now write my segment dot center and this will be to set up the center point is gonna um, gonna find the center point of the object and move it around. Okay, so the center point is roughly like right about there. So if we set that at say maybe, uh, well, let's see, this is 320 wide. So if you set it at 160, is that right? Yeah, uh, 160 and maybe uh, 480 tall, 240, it should be right in the center of the screen. Let's try it. And this is gonna be CG point make, okay. And we're just going to put in those numbers. So let's put 160 and uh, what did I say again? 240. Don't forget to put in the semicolon. Let's run it again. Sure enough, there it is. Uh, it looks to be right in the middle of the uh, screen. Uh, CG points, uh, let's see, CG stands for core graphics. Uh, and point make we're just kind of making a point in the center or in the screen and uh, so that's what we're assigning to uh, the center right here uh, I'm trying to think of some other kind of silly things we could do maybe um, well let, let me show you actually guys uh, another way of uh, setting the uh, location you could also write uh, my segment dot frame equals and then CG rect make and uh, the f it could be the same thing in the beginning here, 160, uh, 240, but then this gives you an option of putting in uh, the width and the height for it. So let's uh, make the width of it be 320 and the height just be, uh, you, you know, we might actually not be able to adjust the height of, a, of this type of object. Let's just see what happens. Maybe this could be a bad example. No, okay, it actually did do that. All right, um, but uh, oh, right, we set the the <laughs> we set it to be really wide, and then we nudged it over. Let's make it at zero. There we go. So that's a big, big fat segmented control at that point. Uh, that, so that's another option you can uh, use for setting the location of something. Uh, we could also. Uh, right. We could also do this. We could write um, dot frame dot uh, origin, 
and then write dot. Oh, and actually, you know what? I'm hitting the escape key after I hit uh, dot, and then that's kind of this predictive, uh, giving me the properties that I can use at that point. Okay, so I could just go ahead and put in whatever the x is already at. So I could do the same thing over here for the y. All right. So let's say at some point, let me comment out this line. So let's say I'd already set up exactly where I want the um, X and Y location to be, all right? And then later on, I was like, well, you know, the only thing that I want to change on this is going to be the width and the height. So I'll just go ahead and leave out leave whatever those already are, okay? And so then maybe you'd want, let's see, just 100 here. Let's build and run it again. Okay, oh, that's a tiny little guy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so that's just a few options there. Uh, let me kind of keep commenting those out. We'll just leave them as they are. Uh, let's go and uh, set up a, a method to occur uh, when we uh, change the value of um, this segment. So it's going to occur whether or not we click on first or if we click on second. And we want to go back over here to our header file okay so come down below any uh, property dec declarations and i'm just going to put in a little comment here that just says methods and our first one we're going to uh, do a, a a negative sign in front of it in parentheses you're going to write ib action and uh, again interface builder okay that's the ib part and this is going to be an action uh, that gets triggered from uh, what we do with um, that uh, segmented control there. So uh, the next part we get to decide on um, the name here. We could call this uh, value changed of my segment just to be really super specific about <laughs> the, uh, the method name. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this off right here. Uh, what you'll often see though um, with uh, IB action uh, methods is uh, this as well, ID and then sender and then the semicolon. And uh, that's a way of kind of uh, carrying with the action uh, who the ID was, who the sender was, or, or basically just whoever it was that triggered uh, this particular um, method. And the reason or where that might come in handy is if we had, um, let's say, two or three of these um, segments, different ones, not segments within here, but two or three like this, I mean, and each one of them had the same um, action that it triggered. In that case, you might want to monitor who was the actual sender of that, whether it's my segment one, my segment two, and so on like that. Uh, in our case right now, though, we don't need that, so I'm going to just leave that out of there. And let me just go do, uh, get rid of those. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, our method kind of uh, declared right here, and then what we want to do is go back over to our implementation file and actually uh, put in code for what that um, method is going to do. And if you kind of want to cheat it a little bit, what I typically do is I just copy that part, uh, jump back over here, paste it in, and then do opening and closing brackets, okay? And now, at this point, uh, let's just see if um, if we are if it's functioning correctly. Uh, I mean, we've got a couple more steps to do here, but I'm going to write ns log in here, and that's like a, a just a just going to give us an output message, um, which you'll see in a second. And you want to do parentheses, um, do the at symbol, okay, and then do a, a closing quotation there and close off your parentheses and to the semicolon. So that's basically how your NS logs are all going to be set up uh, with uh, at symbol, quote, finishing quote, and then what we want to put inside of here. So let's just write hi for right now. And we'll talk later about, you know, tracing out or outputting uh, variables and things like that. But for right now, this is all we need. And again, this NS log is, is kind of similar to a trace statement uh, if you come from an ActionScript background. Okay, so uh, now that's going to actually do something if we change the value of the segment, of course, we need to go back over here now and uh, make it so that we connect up one of these um, actions inside of here to that uh, 
to our code. So let's go and find one more time the document 